Hello everyone, this video is going to focus on the area of sectors and before we get started what I ought to do is I ought to define what a sector is so let's start off with circles. This is a circle with center P radius R. A sector would just simply be a portion of this circle. It's a fraction of it from the center out to the side. So if you draw two radii here out to the curve, this region here would be a sector. You should also recognize that this region out here is also a sector. So you're looking at two sectors there. Every sector you'll want to refer to the angle in the center. So the central angle here is 80 degrees just for this example here. Now if it's 80 degrees here you should recognize that out here is going to be 280 because all the way around in a complete circle you're going to get 360 degrees. Now typically when an angle is written out here instead and a lot of times that happens it'll be written out here for the arc 80 degrees it'll just simply mean that the angle in the center is 80 as well and just kind of take it at being the same. Now the area of a circle is pi r squared but if you're just simply talking about a fraction of it then what you're going to do is you just simply take a fraction of pi r squared. An easy way to do that is just to define this based on the central angle since you know that it's 360 degrees all the way around if you take the angle and we'll call it theta and you place it on top here that constitutes your fraction. Alright, let's do an example. Determine the area of the purple region. Write your answer in terms of pi. This is a sector because of the fact that it is the region bounded by a curve right here, an arc, and also connecting two radii to the center. Let's uh, first write down our formula. Recall that writing the formula is the very first step when doing these type of problems. Now that we've done that, let's go ahead and fill in our information. The angle right here is 75 degrees. And here we're going to put the radius which is 7. And there we are. Okay, let's go ahead and solve for the remaining variable, the remaining variable being A for area. To do that, what you'll want to do is you'll want to multiply across the top here. And then we'll end up dividing by 360 degrees. So right here you got 49, and that'll be multiplied to 75. And that's 3675. So let's go ahead and take this fraction now and reduce it. And by the way, if you're wondering about these degree symbols, where'd they go? we reduce them out, one on top, one on the bottom. You could have reduced this fraction as well first and then multiplying the result here on top to 49. That also would have worked just fine. Reducing this through, we get 245 on top and 24 on the bottom. That's as far as it'll go, so that's our solution. Now, we were to write the answer in terms of pi, but if you were going to be writing this answer, say, to the nearest hundredth, well, this is where we would have to substitute in 3.14 in for pi right there. So if we did that, we would multiply this and then divide by 24. That would have given us 32.05. Please keep in mind, though, that this is an approximation. Please note this is not an equal sign. Here, this is an exact answer, 245 over 24 times pi. No decimals. If we divided this through, we would have gotten a decimal that runs on. So um, this is really the best you could do if you're looking for an exact answer. If you're looking for an approximation, this is your answer here. OK, let's do a second one. Determine the area of a sector. TOP of circle O with diameter 12 and the measure of arc TP being 140. Let's kind of decipher what this means here. The measure of arc TP is 140 is telling you that from T to P that's 140 degrees. Now remember that if out here the angle is written for the arc that just simply means that inside 
that's the central angle. So that should tell you right away that that is going to be theta when we plug this in. The diameter is 12, so hopefully you're able to determine what the radius is in this particular case. It's 6. Okay, now let's go ahead and do this problem. Writing our formula, we get the area is equal to theta over 360 degrees times pi r squared. Let's plug in our values. We know that right here we're going to replace with 140. Here we know we're going to write in the radius, which is 6. So there we are. And now let's go ahead and solve. Multiplying across the top here, you get 140 times 6 squared, that's 36 here, times 140, which gives us 5040. Please note that the degree symbols have reduced out. That's why you're not seeing it here anymore. Dividing this through, we get 14. And that is our answer. All right, let's try another. Let's solve for x here, knowing the area of a sector. Let's start off by writing our formula first. And then what we'll do is we'll plug in the values that we know. We already know what a is. A is the area being 68 pi. We also know the central angle. It's 170 degrees. The radius we don't know, so this is going to be x. All right, so now that we have all those plugged in, let's go ahead and solve for our remaining variable. Since x is being multiplied to a pi and to a 170 and being divided by a 360, we want to get rid of this stuff first before anything. So let's first focus on the 360. With the degree symbols reducing out, the 360 here poses an issue since it is what we have here as a fraction. So let's take this 360 here and let's multiply it to both sides. And what that does essentially is it allows us to get rid of this denominator. 360s here reduce out. However, on the left hand side you'll actually have to multiply that together. So that's 24, 480 pi. The right hand side is just simply 170 pi x squared, because that's all you're left with. You have the 170, you have a pi, you have an x squared. So we're just simply writing it out. But notice, no more denominator. That's gone now. Now we just want to get this by itself. So let's go ahead and take the 170 pi and divide both sides. This allows us to reduce out the pi's on both sides. The 170's reduce out as well on the right hand side. On the left hand side you're just simply going to divide. And that's 144. Now since it's x squared and not x we're going to have to square root both sides so let's go ahead and do that. And that leaves us with 12. And that is our solution. Okay let's do one last one. Determine the area of this shaded region. Now this may not look like anything, but actually you should be seeing two sectors here. You have a larger sector, that's this entire thing, which what you're seeing here. And what happened is this little part here has been cut out. Therefore we're going to use two sector formulas. You have the area of the large sector, that's theta over 360 times pi big R squared and we minus the area of the smaller sector, which is that. So this would be the formula that we would use for this problem. Here's a second way to look at it. Consider that you used to have the entire circle. Then you cut out the inside, giving you an annulus. And then with that annulus, what you have essentially is just a sector of it, only since it's just this part here, this guy's kind of taken away. So you can actually write this in a different way. You could write it as just simply the area of an annulus or the donut shape. And then what you do is you take a fraction of that annulus, which is what we did here. So for a formula, either one works. Since we're dealing with sectors here, how about we start with our first formula? Let's go ahead and plug in our values. Hopefully you recognize that the angle is the same for both of these. Both of these have the same thing, so it's 60 degrees. The radius of the small sector, that's this guy here, 
is right there at 6. For the larger one, though, it's a little different. If we just simply wrote 3, that would be an issue because of the fact that it's supposed to be a bigger radius. And 3 isn't bigger than 6. Also notice that's not really a radius. It just spans from here to here. So you'll notice in this representation, I drew the entire length. That entire length is the entire radius. So 3 and 6 together is what you would write in here. So not 3, but 9 instead. OK, let's go ahead and finish this off. This part here, that's 9 squared times 60, is 4860. And then this part here, that's 6 squared, which is 36 times 60, is 2160. Now let's go ahead and finish this off. We can divide this through. That gives us 13 and a half. And this fraction, if you were to divide it through, we get 6. So 13 and a half minus 6 is 7 and a half. And that is our answer. That's it for this one. I'll see you next time.